hand tool is we have to be able to talk to it. To be able to talk to a scan tool, you have to have something called a dongle. This is a one-way password protected device that talks wirelessly to the scan tool. Underneath the dashboard is going to be what we call a DLC or data link connector. It's a 16 pin connector because this is an OBD2 vehicle, Onboard Diagnostics System 2. Onboard Diagnostics Systems 1 were the older pre-1996 vehicles and when we hooked up the dongle to that we had to power it up externally after 1996 the society of automotive engineers changed that and they made these self-powered pin number 16 in your data link connector is your power pin it's always going to have source voltage so whatever your voltage is I don't like to say 12 volts because if I've got a little low battery or if I've got a 36 volt system or something like that, source voltage is gonna be 16, pin 16. So we'll plug this in and then when we plug it in, you'll see it'll start lighting up. Kind of like when you're talking to Bluetooth headsets or something like that, as it's pinging back and forth, that's what's gonna happen. Does anybody know what a DLC connector is on a car? I know, I just said that. Has anybody ever actually touched one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guess what? Somebody's going to take this and plug it into the DLC connector on this Malibu and turn the key on. Who's going to do that for me? Gee, don't all jump at once. <laughs> so go around with this. So you're going to find that 16 pin connector. You're going to plug it in. It's actually hanging down because we put the trim panel. So you're going to plug it in. You're gonna roll it outside the window and lay it up on the windshield. And then you're gonna turn the key forward to the on position. And that's it. Now you're gonna close the door so we don't drain the battery. There's two ways you can talk to a vehicle. One is through the scanner mode and one is through OBD direct or what we often refer to it as global OBD, okay? If you notice down here, this is turned blue. That means that that dongle is now talking to this scan tool. So the first thing I have to do is I have to put a vehicle in here because it says no active vehicle. So I need to find the vehicle that I'm looking for. If I click scanner, and you can see I've got a whole list of vehicles here. You would move it up, scroll it up, and you can see all the vehicles that we have. So we're gonna find out, this is a Chevrolet. We're gonna click Chevrolet. Now you notice the alpha, alphanumeric right here, EDC. The 10th digit of the VIN code is always your year. Somebody may tell you this is a 2005 or 2006, but don't believe that until you confirm it with the VIN number. So I want somebody to go around to the VIN plate on the upper corner and tell me what the 10th digit of the VIN is. Somebody go around there. You may need your flashlight to look in there, but you should be able to look on the windshield. So you can come back around now. Notice what this did. It did two things. It loaded up that this vehicle was an automatic transmission vehicle and it automatically loaded the complete VIN for me. It pinged the ECM, read the VIN, read the engine that's in there. Now it's asking me if that's correct. It is correct, so I have to load this vehicle up. All I'm going to do is click OK. And now we're going to get a whole bunch of systems that we want to look at. We can check for codes, we can go into the engine, we can check anti-lock, airbag, all of that stuff. Radio, theft deterrent. I'm not a huge fan of GM, but one of the things I do like about GM is they're very open with their diagnostic capability to the aftermarket. You can do almost everything with this, this snap-on scan tool that you can with a GM Tech 2 factory scan tool. I can go into all of these modules and command things on and off. I can roll windows up and down, I can turn headlights on, 
move the wipers, move the seats. I can do, I can shift it manually while I'm driving it. I can do all kinds of things. A lot of manufacturers don't readily give up that information. Ford is one of them. They're very protective of what they give out. But GM, and maybe that's one of the reasons they went bankrupt, if you call them up and say, how do I do something? Here you go, they'll just give it to you. So this scan tool is really good as far as letting me do all that. What I wanna do first is I wanna see if there's any codes in here. So I'm gonna code scan and see if anything shows up. And now you can go through here and you can see it's showing down at the bottom, I've got one engine code, one trans code, five analog codes, 15 body control module codes. Yeah, I, I have a lot, okay? So I need to go back and see what those codes are individually. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go into anti-lock. And now I'm gonna go to codes menu display codes and I'm going to check current first now remember I said two things about current codes for ABS if the light is on and stays on it's something in the module the pump assembly something like that if it only comes on when you're driving it's generally wheel speed sensor related I have no current so that tells me it at least did its self test and everything was okay so I'm going to back out of here and I'm going to see if I have any history. Look at all the history codes I have. Remember those, all those different codes? Right wheel speed sensor, left rear wheel speed sensor. These numbers here, that's the code that's going to give you the definition of what it is. After 1996, when it became OBD2, we had a very standardized procedure. Prior to OBD2, it was like the Wild West. A left rear wheel speed sensor on a GM might have been a C15. On a Ford, it was a B. After 1996, the Society of Automotive Engineers said, we're going to make it all the same. C0045 is a left rear wheel speed sensor on every car after 1996. Just like if you get a misfire code, P0301, P0300, that is a misfire code on every car produced after 1996. Made our job as technicians a lot easier, okay? Now we're not gonna get into the sure track portion of this yet, because we covered that in engine performance, but this shows that I did have some history codes. So what I wanna do before I go any further is I wanna clear my codes out. The engine, the key is on, the engine is off. I'm gonna hit yes, and they are all cleared. So I should be able to go back in here and double check current codes, no codes present. And I should go back into history, no codes present. Before I do that, make sure you either print them out or take a screenshot. As a technician, I wanna see if I can duplicate those codes. Sometimes we get phantom codes. Sometimes we don't get codes that come back until very specific things are duplicated. So it is a good practice. Take a screenshot, print it out. I've got it in my hands. Now I clear it and I take the car out and I try to simulate what the customer was telling me in their complaint and see if I can get those codes to come back up. There's also another trick that'll help you get to that point quicker, which we will discuss in engine performance. It's called freeze frame data, so remember that. So now I come back here through my codes menu and I've got a couple of other things I can do. One of them is functional tests. Notice that automated bleed. If I have a system that has one of those accumulators that I, I want to make sure that I bleed the pump correctly, I go in through automated bleed and it will tell me how to do it. You have to have a pressure bleeder hooked up to the car and I'm not going to go through it now because it will cycle the pump but it will tell you. You have to have the pressure bleeder on, you have to have the system primed and ready to go, and you hold your foot on the brake pedal, and then I will click continue. You'll hear a bunch of racket underneath the hood as it's cycling that pump and pushing all the air bubbles out of that pump. 
The automated bleed is specifically to bleed the pump assembly and the e But you look, I've got something called output controls. So I hit that, I can actually turn solenoids on and off. So if I think I have a problem where my right front wheel speed sensor, my right front wheel is not going into ABS mode. I can actually drive the car and command that right front wheel on individually. From the scan tool while I'm driving, I can turn it on and off. And it'll actually activate that ABS on that particular corner. We're bypassing the computer and having the scan tool tell it what to do. This is an invaluable diagnostic capability we have. So we're gonna come back through here now. Those are the two things that we can do and we're gonna come into data display. Traction control, stability control, ABS. And now you'll look at it and see what we have. We've got vehicle speed speed sensors in mile an hour, how much voltage, do we have our pump getting feedback, our brake temperature status, we monitor the temperature of our brake fluid now, okay? Well, how does this help me as a tech because the car's on the lift? What I do with this is obviously I don't have it hooked up to a TV. I get in the car and I put the scan tool on my lap and I start to go for a drive and I watch this. And you're looking for a couple of things. Number one, I want my mile an hour for my vehicle to match my wheel speed sensors. I want them all to accelerate and decelerate at the same speed. In other words, it should be 10, 9, 8, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the same. Typically what you'll have when a customer, the biggest complaint I ever had at GM was that the vehicle gets almost to a stop and the ABS kicks in. What I would do is I would get in the vehicle with the scan tool and I would start driving the vehicle. And I would watch the wheel speed sensors. And they would start ticking down, 10, 9, 8, 7. All of a sudden, one would drop down to two. Well, the computer doesn't know that there's a problem. It assumes that the wheel's locking up. So it activates the ABS. Now I know it's, guess what? I know what corner it's in. So now I can get to that specific corner and try to figure out what the problem is. So you're driving the car when you're doing this. If you're driving at a speed where you can't look down because we don't want you to text and drive, so we don't want you monitoring this and driving, there's something in there, you notice on the bottom, looks like controls. All I have to do is arm it and put my finger on a button. And I can lay it on my lap next to me as I'm driving. As soon as it does the problem, I hit the button. It'll take a picture 30 frames before the fault and 30 frames after. Then I can come back and either look at it on the scan tool or hook it up to my laptop and I can scroll through and watch everything as it happens up to the moment of failure. So I can start to see what's, what's causing the problem. All right, does that make sense? Real quick, just to get out of here before I show you something else. Oh, where was I at? Troubleshooter. This is what I kind of do like about Snap-on. This is why those updates are so important for me. This, I just got the updates for these, so we're updated up to 2016. You saw that on the first screen. All this data that they collect up to 2016, they put in here. So if I have a code, and, and let's say I work in an independent shop. I, I don't know these GM vehicles that well. I can actually come in here, click this, and I can find different tips and things to do on how to clear codes, how to look at stuff. I can punch in whichever codes I have, and it will give me the most common tips that technicians in the field have done for these repairs. When we get into this in Engine Performance, you'll realize, because you're connected to the web through this, I'm actually connected to the internet right now, and I am constantly talking to ShopKey and SureTrack. So it gives me real-time information, all right? Any questions on this?
All right, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a second here and then I'm gonna set it up and show you how.